Welcome home. I'm Dr. Tama, a minister, licensed psychologist, and sacred artist. And this is Homecoming, a podcast to facilitate your journey home to yourself. While I will provide weekly inspiration and mental health tips, this podcast is not the same as personalized therapy. I'm so excited you're on the journey. If you want to request specific topics or to submit a poem for me to read on the podcast, email me at homecomingpodcasts at gmail.com. Also, to build our community, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Let's begin. Welcome home, co-journers. I'm glad you're here for another episode, and I'm grateful we have two submissions for this week for our poetry Both of them are brief and deal with the issue of growth. So the first poem is from Ayana Ellis, and it reads, Look at me, loving myself through the pain, numbness, confusion, and overwhelm. Look at me, standing by my side through it all. Look at me, allowing myself to heal. Look at me treating myself tenderly. Look at me leaning on God's everlasting arm. Look at me not afraid to be seen. Look at me walking into my wealthy place. Look at me believing that I can. Oh God, look at me. Yes, Ayana, beautiful. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. And it is beautiful when we come out of hiding and are willing to reveal ourselves, even to ourselves. And so thank you so much for naming that. And the second poem comes from Melissa Maynard. And this poem is entitled, She. She changed her mind. No longer would she pour into cups that didn't replenish her excellency. No longer would she run on empty. No longer would she accept the bare minimum. No longer would she give more than was returned. Like the change in seasons, so was her heart transforming. Spring had come and she remembered who she was. She evolved. Yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. Making those decisions that my inner changes want to show up in my outward life, including in my relationships. And so thank you so much for sharing that, Melissa. And today's topic, I believe, is one we can all relate to at different points of our lives. And that is releasing regret or coping with regret. And I know that, you know, a part of the life's journey is there are seasons, moments, decisions, actions that we replay in our minds. Uh, There are consequences we have faced for some of the decisions that we have made, things we did or things we regret not doing. And we can oftentimes feel stuck, overwhelmed, and overpowered by our regrets. And so I invite you in this moment to take sacred pause and reflect on the major regrets of your life. Sometimes there are minor things where, oh, if I could do that over, I would have chosen something different but it doesn't weigh heavily on you. It's not in the forefront of your thoughts. And then there are other aspects of our lives which can feel like uh, they haunt us, they grieve us, they uh, create distress for us. And so just taking a moment to reflect what are the major regrets that you carry And one of uh, the important parts in our healing journey and releasing journey is recognizing 
what has been the cost holding on so actively or intensely to the regret. So as a result of the regret, uh, do you carry great shame and end up punishing yourself, penalizing yourself, not allowing yourself to receive goodness in life because of feelings of unworthiness? Does it shape the way you view yourself and then treat yourself? Uh, does it show up in your spirituality or religious beliefs being consumed with regret and allowing that to define you and define your relationship with yourself? Do you lose sleep over it? Has the regret even manifested in your physical body? And so all that you have been carrying has compromised possibly your health, physical health and mental health. Are your regrets a part of what feeds depression for you or anxiety and insecurity? And so being mindful uh, in terms of the frequency of the thoughts, is it something you are perpetually daily reminded of? And if not, what are the reminders? You know, is it a certain date or season uh, in the year? Is it when you see certain people? If you think about your time at a particular stage in your life, that that is in the forefront. So we want to consider, one, what are my major regrets? And two, what is the intensity or severity of the regret costing me? What is it creating for me? And we want to also be honest with ourselves about our feelings, because as it relates to regret, sometimes there are things that we have not apologized for. And so we can portray uh, to others that it is not a big deal. But we know homecoming begins with telling yourself the truth. So even if no one else knows it is a big deal, even if other people think you're over it or that you never even think about it, uh, let us give ourselves permission to take sacred pause and acknowledge how you feel about the things that you did that you wish you had not done and how you feel about the things you wish you had done but you, for whatever reason, did not take action or did not speak up or were not responsive or did not engage. And so we allow ourselves the space to think about both the regrets and the emotions. And then it is important that we really cultivate self-compassion. And self-compassion is not excuse-making, right? So it's not saying that it didn't matter or that it was okay that I did something that I really feel I should not have done. Self-compassion is more about understanding the mindset I was in, the state and condition of life I was in, uh, the various factors or barriers that kept me either from acting or that kept me immobilized and stuck. So I want to have an understanding of myself. One of the things I've discovered is we often judge our past selves based on our present knowledge, right? We often judge our past self based on our present knowledge, which we know is not fair. So some of us are holding ourselves responsible for what we didn't know at 10, at 12, at 16, uh, some of the things you did at 19, where you have some more lived experience now. And so for us to be uh, less harsh and more compassionate, more gentle with ourselves, so that I can think about what was happening in my life, in my life's journey, that made uh, the option I selected the most attractive option at the time. Like, why did I choose that? And not in an insulting or condemning way, 
but to get very curious about yourself, right? To study yourself, reflect and explore and understand yourself so that it can even make more sense to you. Sometimes we don't think we make sense, but when we really reflect on ourselves and our lives, when we reflect on our moments and journey before the moment, then we can see it with more grace and more compassion. So I invite you now to reflect on for those major regrets. What do you know now or what do you understand now or what do you feel now that you didn't know, understand or feel or have experience with at the time? Along with the uh, compassion and understanding, it is also important to recall the lesson and to ensure that I am growing and shifting, right? So regret becomes even uh, heavier if I keep repeating the same behavior, right? So if I authentically, honestly, truly regret it, then what am I doing differently in this season, right? So perhaps I didn't speak up for what was right, And I regret that to this day. But if something like that happens in the present, I am not going to be silent. I'm going to speak up. Or perhaps you regret staying in a friendship or a relationship for too long. And as you reflect on it, then you can think about going forward. If I am unsafe, if I am dishonored, disrespected in these ways, then I am not going to make myself persevere, endure as I did before, right? So what is the learned lesson that you can actually observe is showing up in different behavior, right? So that I can prevent myself, protect myself from having to regret this again, right? And so we think about the self-compassion, we think about the lessons learned and the change in behavior. We can also think about, have I done anything to make uh, amends to address it? So if the regret involves something I did or didn't do as it relate to others, have I ever acknowledged that to them? And have I ever sincerely apologized? Right. And not apologizing with a sense of entitlement of now they have to make me their best friend or now we have to uh, be back together again. But it is a matter of accountability and integrity and honesty. Are there things that you're living with regret about that you have never shared with the person who perhaps was harmed by your behavior or harmed by your inaction? Right. And then along with the apology, we know the best apology, in addition to words, is a change in behavior and a change in behavior. We know also starts with a change of heart. And so is there anything that you need to do or that can be done or that this other person would like you to do to make things right? Right. So if you regret lying on someone and you have never told the truth. You know, this may be the season. You may continue to hold the weight of that until you shatter the silence and tell the truth, right? That you told a lie, right? It is a matter of regretting that you took something from someone. Have you given it back if it's a material object? Or perhaps you regret that you took money from or that not even stolen it. Sometimes you borrowed and never paid it back, right? So, oh, I can just regret that I didn't make that right. Or I can start trying to make that right, even if that looks like a payment plan, right? So is there any corrective action that you can take to address what you didn't do, right? If it's a matter of you saw someone being mistreated and you didn't say anything, to, and it's, you know, it may be the feeling of too little, too late. And to the person, it might feel like too little, too late. For some people, it can be liberating to have someone who was present 
come back to them and say, I regret I didn't speak up. What was being done to you or what was said about you was wrong. And I don't agree. And I didn't have the courage uh, to say it in the moment or whatever the dynamic was, but that they deserved better, right? That you should have been defended and protected. And I regret my silence, right? Now, does that fix everything? No, but it does more than our continued silence, right? So you want to really consider around the things that I regret. Is there any room for action, right? Is there any room for not only a change of heart and a, and a spoken word of apology, but is there anything that I can do to try to make the outcome more just? Yes. So this is important as we think about releasing our regret and being able to really address the regret. It also is going to be important to start building your present. Many of us get stuck in hindsight, right? That your most of your day is thinking about the past. And so needing to now cultivate to create a life in my present, right? So instead of just spending all day and night replaying, you know, what happened, uh, to choose the present. What am I going to do today to show up for my life? What am I going to do today to begin the path forward for the future I want and for who I am aiming to be and to become? And so being intentional about focusing on some things in the present right? So you may regret how you treated someone in a past relationship, but now you're in a present relationship. Are you responding differently? Are you treating them differently? Are you showing up differently, right? You may regret the way some of the things you did as a parent. Perhaps your parent, your your children are now grown, but are you being intentional about trying to heal your relationship with them if they're open to that? Are you intentional about the ways you now respond to your grandchildren so that you're not repeating the same negative patterns or the same actions that you regret taking uh, in the past, right? So you may regret some things you did that led to you being fired from a job, but now in your new place of work, What are you doing to build positive relationships? What are you doing to operate in the spirit of excellence? And so being uh, intentional about being present for your present, right? Being present for your present. And as we do that, it will really empower us to know that we actually can be different that we can, as our client, as our uh, poet said, uh, we can evolve. And so I invite you to note within yourself on today, I give myself permission to spend more time building my present life. I give myself permission to turn the page. And so, you know, to even consider, you know, the ways in which perhaps you have been punishing yourself and can you let yourself out of timeout, right? Or because of the regrets that you have cut off all possibilities of joy, you have cut off opportunities for pleasure, you have cut off opportunities for growth because of that unworthiness, right? Or that fear of repeating the past, right? Or the concern that you would let someone else down or let yourself down. And so we decide on today, I want to be present in the present. Yes. So to be present, uh, we begin to set some new goals, right? What are the goals that you have for yourself? Some may be related to addressing uh, the issues that you regret and what are the goals even outside of that or beyond that 
personally, professionally, in terms of your mental health and physical health, in terms of your finances and your spirituality. We want to be holistic and we want to be mindful of the decisions that we make, which are shaping our lives. And so goal setting can help me shift from being past focus to looking at my present and my future. You also can think about is difficult or you feel stuck in terms of the regret uh, to consider counseling, right? To consider talking with a therapist so that they can empower you and help facilitate the process and the skills for you to become unstuck. And I know some of you who are listening are thinking about things that cannot be fixed that you regret, right? So some of the examples I gave were, there was something you can do about it. There are those who are present who regret actions that not only cannot be undone, but there isn't something, there is not a way to quote unquote fix it as it relates to the specifics of that dynamic. And so it is important to be able to acknowledge that within yourself, you know, to say that this has created a ripple effect. There are some long-term consequences of my action or my words or my inaction. And I recognize uh, the limitations that exist around either connecting Uh, with that person or putting back into place what was dismantled by me or by others. And so I tell myself the truth with that and I can grieve that, right? I can grieve the harms uh, of my, of the things I did and didn't do, right? And I grieve that, I acknowledge it, And then even in my grief and acknowledgement, I will have to also tell myself the truth that perpetually punishing myself also does not fix it. Perpetually punishing myself and withholding from myself does not make it better, right? And so now I want to be honest, given that you know, the consequences are what they are and my self-punishment does not fix it. How do I want to live the next season of my life? What do I want to open myself up to going forward? And it is really a a daily process, uh, one that requires patience with yourself because it is not instant to say, okay, never mind, I'm over it. But as we get intentional about leaning into that process and into the work, you can find yourself more and more focused on the present over the past, right? And each day you do it again, and each day it becomes a little lighter and a little easier. I invite your soul to tell your heart, mind, body, and spirit, welcome home. Mm -hmm.